Good to know you're still with us. Now, several groups and individuals have expressed their thoughts on the address of President Muhammad Buhari. And the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, is one of these. The party has lamented that President Buhari's address on the coronavirus pandemic failed to address the impact of the scourge on Nigeria. The party said that the president had no new solutions to offer. It also added that the president failed to respond to demands for medications, direct social palliatives, cut in taxes, and the reduction in the pump price of fuel. Still with me in the studio is political analyst Ugochuku Ikako. Thank you for staying. Thank you for having me. And we also have uh, joining us via telephone legal practitioner Benga Demola Ojo. Thank you for staying with us. Okay, uh, I'm told he's not on the line. We'll get him and the conversation will continue as soon as he joins us. Your reaction, the, the key words here, empty, failed to address uh, sal salient issues. Um, uh, the party said outside the social distancing and isolation, which Nigerians are already, have already imposed on themselves, the president had no new solutions. Do you agree? Well, uh, at this point, uh, I think I want to disagree with the People's Democratic Party. Uh, this is not a time for uh, uh, inter-party rivalry. This is a time for us as, as a nation to keep any uh, uh, party disagreement and the rest of them to understand that we have one purpose. Uh, if you're saying that the president didn't do this, what is your suggestion? What should be done? I didn't hear that in all their conversation. And as a party, sometimes you have a shadow government. You have, what are, they, what are your suggestions? What do you think I'm improving? Any, any, any person, any other person can come out and easily criticize. Yeah, for me, the president didn't address the nation on time, as it's supposed to be. The address uh, over the weekend was the first address since coronavirus came to Nigeria in, Feb yeah, in February. So uh, he didn't speak on time, but already we could see uh, there, there's a bit of synergy across the states with the federal government in terms of funding, in terms of funding them, giving them access to money to do all these things. Uh, the money won't go to individuals, it will go to states, it will go to, uh, for example, Lagos State, Lagos State government got a lot of funds from, uh, from the federal government, uh, at the Abuja, the same thing, and, uh, and some other states across the country. So uh, this is to help them in what they're doing, this is to help democracy, what are you doing directly? Because at the end, at the end of the day, it is the state government that interface uh, with the people. So uh, for me, uh, the most important thing is that if we can have that Senate and the understanding between the federal and the state government at, at all levels at this point to understand, okay, this is what we're doing, this, this is where we can improve on. If they are saying that this is what needs to be improved upon, yeah, we understand that the positive measures are not much, not a lot of people are benefited, but that is a step in the right direction. So at this point, what would make sense is to suggest, okay, this is what they should have, this is what they could do more, not they haven't done anything. That, it means that PDP as a party is not being sincere on this particular on this particular conversation, because if they are being sincere, they will understand that okay, the president didn't speak on time, and I agree with that. Nobody's going to nobody's going to dispute that. But when he did, a lot of people, a lot of Nigerians were happy with his address. A lot of Nigerians were, were felt okay, this this addressed uh, their fears. Some felt that more could have done, but that is a step in the right direction. And if the president is there consistently to speak to address some of these issues, he's not the best. He's not the best speaker in the world. Uh, he has his issues when he speaks. Sometimes it doesn't sound coherent. We understand that, but there are people that are working with him at this point. Uh, the minister, the minister of Health and the NCDC, uh, NCDC boss, and they're doing, and they're doing just well. So I think they need more uh, encouragement than, than condemnation. All right, I'm told we have uh, Benga Demolaojo on the phone. Thank you for joining us again. Hello, D Benga. I'm here. Okay, I'm saying thank you for joining us again. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, too. All right, so we're looking at PDP's reaction to the president's statement. They say it's empty. Um, it's, um, it doesn't provide new solutions. Gochiku seems to disagree. On what side of the divide are you? I agree with you, Gochiku, absolutely. Uh, the reaction of the PDP publicity secretary does, act, does not rhyme with uh, the general uh, uh, mood of people in the country. I... I think the president's um, speech was good. It was late, but it was good. And I think it contained a lot of uh, measures that are meant to check the, the spread of, uh, of coronavirus in our country. What, like Ugochuku said, the PDP should have done was to have uh, told us what other areas 
that we need to look at so that there will be an improvement in our approach to this problem. But the, pro the, the response seems to be a political one, and I think there should be a step back from that kind of attitude, especially in the kind of situation we are in now. Good enough, and uh, in what appears to be a contradiction to what the PDP Public Secretary said, the Senate caucus, the PDP caucus in the Senate, actually came out to commend the speech of the president and the measures being taken so far. Their only area of um, disagreement was the fact that the president did not carry the National Assembly along. So I agree with Ugochuko. The, the statement of the PDP public secretary is, um, is typically too political. All and right. that is not what we need at this point in time. Okay. They did make some suggestions. One of them that comes to my mind is the request uh, for the price of fuel to be further reduced from 125 naira to, say, 80 or 90 naira. Is that something that is doable in the first instance? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's doable. All right. uh, I'm saying this thing because uh, presently the whole country is under lockdown. And we understand that transportation of uh, logistics for fuel across the country have happened like over the last few days, right? And most of these companies and rest of them have made projections on what, what need, they need to make on that trip, on that product, and the rest of them. So uh, there can be conversation to say, okay, what, what is going to happen in the next coming days? Nobody is moving around the country. Not, people are not moving around. A uh, few people have, have stored uh, diesel or whatever they need in their house. So I think that might happen after. after I think that will be, be, be right if it happens after the whole lockdown that people are out so that it can be easy for people to cope and, and, and to live better. But for me, I, I have issue with PDP looking at the president alone. There are PDP governors across, this, across the country. What are they doing individually? What are they doing? It's not about saying, okay, this is it. So for me, it's not, about, it's not sounding too political at this point. We need to understand. For example, we've seen the effort that the governor of uh, Delta State, uh, Ifanyo Okowa, has, you know, has made consistently, right? which is in line with what is, being happening, is happening in Lagos State and in some other states across the country. That is what we need to, what, that is what we need to hear. At this point, we need surge among the states, uh, uh, the PDP state in River State, uh, the APC state in Lagos, because the states need to work as one. This is not the time for them to bring their ego and their, and their inability to work Work as one to advance the nation. This is not it at this point. And for me, the PDP, PDP uh, caller is saying, what he's saying is practically irrelevant. Okay, but I mean, if, if they speak, we don't like it. And they don't speak, we don't like it. Some, there must be an opposition. And at this time, they are raising their voice. Some would say, sometimes criticism is necessary, whether good or bad, to put you on your toes so you know that somebody um, is watching. Uh, Barista Benga, the, there is an aspect that they mentioned that I would also want to uh, talk to you about. Uh, you could chip in your thoughts on that aspect of having opposition, uh, whether good or bad. Um, they, talk, okay. they, they talked about the moratorium on loans. Uh, they yes. said there was no clear data for implementation. And they reminded the president that already the COVID-19 had affected the performance of those loans. Granting them moratorium is therefore of no consequences on the capital and the interest on them. What's your take on this? I, I think when the president spoke, he spoke on a general uh, basis. The details are to be worked out. And I do not think we should expect for the president to break everything down in the speech that he has made. Um, going forward, those who are saddled with the responsibility of dealing with the details of the policy of that measure, they will know how to proceed with it. Because seriously, I, I, I don't think, um, like we have said earlier, that opposition should be just for the fun of it. It should be constructive. And in this measure, I'm very sorry to say, uh, the PDP Public Secretary seemed to have misconstrued what his role ought to be as an opposition spokesperson. In most of his interventions, is, is, is always uh, offline and not in sync with, um, with, with the aspirations of, uh, of, of, of good governance. 
All right. Um, I, I think we should, except you have a thought to add to that, well, we should move on to other aspects. Right, we can move on, but for me, uh, I, just, I, just, I just need the PDP Public Secretary to tell me what uh, the PDP governor in Enugu State is doing uh, for my people in Enugu State. I need to hear that. I can't, I, I'm not hearing anything from what Ifan Yuguani is doing. I, don't, I can't hear anything from PDP from the that south, in, in the southeast, in the south south. There was a PDP rally that happened in Oyo State a couple of uh, weeks back, which shouldn't have happened. Right, and uh, I've not seen Kola come out to say PDP made a mistake, you know, in doing that. Even though that the government, the governor, had admitted and presently uh, he's, he's, in, he's in self isolation because he was he tested positive to coronavirus. So, it, it, we, we don't need to start fighting each other, start dragging each other. But see, I think I need to I need to understand that what how can Anambra State or how can Enugu State help? Uh, and I'm about to be better. What can Ogun State do? What can Oyo do so that Lagos will be safer? So that is the conversation that we need to hear. Other things can be talked about when we're out of this thing because at the start, the, co the country is, is, is facing a huge risk and we need each other to, to get rid of this. Indeed, we do need each other. Talking about needing each other, ASU has come up uh, to you know, add their voice and what uh, contribution they can bring. And one of that is that the OKID for members nationwide willing to work with medical and paramedical workers as volunteers in carrying out uh, public enlightenment and professional intervention uh, initiative against the uh, COVID-19 spread. Um, Baris Benga, what's your thoughts on this move by ASU? Is it a good thing or, I mean, they should do more? I, I think it's a good thing for ASU to pull back from the drink and uh, recognize that this is a time of emergency and that all hands ought to be on, on deck. We know that ASO and uh, the government have been at each other's throat for a number of years now, and we will not blame ASO so much for that. Over time, we find that the government has been breaking its, uh, its promises and uh, going back on agreements that they have with them. But recognizing that we are in a peculiar situation now, and that um, we need all hands to be on deck. I think it's a good gest gesture from, uh, from ASO. And I s hope that at the end of uh, it all, the government will um, consider this and approach their deliberations with ASO going forward in good faith. All right, just one last thought before I let you go. Uh, President Buhari signed the COVID-19 regulation 2020 in accordance uh, with the quarantine, quarantine rather, act, um, uh -huh. giving legal teeth to his directive on a lockdown. Um, as a legal practitioner, does this end the argument as to the legalities of his directive and the concerns that if he doesn't do it, that we're creating loopholes for dictatorial tendencies? Well, I think one of the first things the president ought to have done was to have declared a state of emergency. The Quarantine Act came into effect almost a century ago. At that time, we were not operating the kind of constitution that we are operating now. Under the present constitution, People have fundamental rights. Those fundamental rights are severely limited by the provisions of the Quarantine Act. But the pro Constitution provides that when we are in a state of emergency, such laws are allowed in order to deal with the emergency. So I'm actually surprised as to why the president's um, legal team have, uh, or has not thought it necessary to advise the president to declare a state of emergency so that some of these measures being taken, not just by the federal government, but by the various state governors, will be brought within the ambit of the law. Are, are you saying because that these regulation, these COVID regulations 2020 law that the president has signed um, is not enough to address the situation? No, it is not enough. Not okay. when a state of emergency hasn't been declared. All right, I'm afraid that's how we're, we're going to stop it. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the program tonight. You're welcome. Ugojiku, final thoughts on this? 
Uh, I think uh, on, on ASU part, I think it's commendable on their own part to say, well, how can we help and what can we do? Uh, it is in the interest of the country that anybody that can help at this point, uh, organization that can help, that they, they should come in and help. I think why it is important for that ASU is that ASU across the country, they have host communities. Um, most of these host communities, you see people that are poor, people that are not, uh, people that can't feed very, very well, that depend on the universities being there for their life to, to move on. So. Uh, the NCDC and the government can work with them in reaching out to these people in terms of communicating to them, in terms of using them to uh, uh, reach out in terms of their food or anything, because the, some of these people in these communities work across the universities across the country, be it uh, federal, state, polytechnic, and rest of them. So uh, we're going to beat this. But uh, what we need is just for us to keep putting our heads together and keep working together. Uh, if the government says stay at home, your part as a citizen and active is to stay at home and let government do their job. And together, we'll, we'll get through this. Yeah, we will. Thank you very much for your Th thoughts. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take our plots reports now. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Stay with us. Like a survival of the fittest, Lagosians are in last minute efforts to secure food and other essentials ahead of the 14 day lockdown, starting 11 p.m. on Monday. What happens to the promises? Those are the people that actually, actually need provisions to be made for them. The elites can actually make provisions for themselves, but the poor people can't. You come and lock down the place. So I'm here to shop um, all my essentials and then stay indoors for the 14 days. I've not had electricity since yesterday. I have way over 100 liters in my, in my, in my um, what's it called, in my trunk. I'm going to buy petrol. That's about um, 13,000. Is it everybody that can afford to bring that kind of money right now? Some of these Lagosians, while engaging in panic shopping, are seen wearing nose masks and hand gloves, which they lament now cost the fortune. I got the masks for 500 for one, and the glove, you have to buy the pack. So things are really expensive right now. Just to prevent me from other people now, you know, people sneeze, things like that. Just to, because we can actually contract it anywhere. Meanwhile, the prices of food stuff have gone up at most markets ahead of the lockdown. I'm selling crayfish and the maggi and the leaf to cook soup. They are buying it. And we are selling it in normal price. We are selling it before. If they sell rice before, it's one way. It's one five. But now, foreign rice is two five. Nigeria rice, one way. It's one thousand. Today, because of markets, it costs. As found out, wild chicken still sells for the normal price, Essentials like Gary, which used to sell for 500 naira, now goes for as much as 1,000 naira. So also there is a hike in the prices of beans and other food items. Last minute buy-ins right here as Nigerians prepare to stock up their houses ahead of the 14 days uh, lockdown issued last night by the president. Um, a lot of fear and agitation still in the minds of Nigerians from the Oniru market right here in Lagos, Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa. It is going to be a tough couple of days for many reasons. I urge you, however, to find ways to stay positive as we collectively fight to eradicate this pandemic and get our lives back. Have no doubt, we will win this. Thanks for watching. Until next time, remember to maintain basic hygiene and the social distancing rule. Bye for now.